Reading data logs can feel overwhelming, almost like trying to read Chinese if you're new to Holly EFI. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make logging less intimidating, easier to understand, and why without it, you're not even really tuning, you're just sort of guessing. I get thousands of messages each year, and one of the most common problems that people seem to have confusion over is fuel injection terminology. So rather than making this a boring two hour long lecture video about terminology, I've instead created a reference guide that you can just save to your computer, your phone, or even print it out if you want. Just click the link in the description and I'll email it to you. It's free and I know 100 terminology sounds like a lot, but you don't need to memorize it. It's more of just a reference guide. When it comes to your data logging, knowing what these channels are and what they do is half of the battle. So once you understand what all of this is, you're gonna be way ahead. So now that you have a handle on what all the terminology means, you're ready to just jump in the car with a laptop, hit record on the logger, and go for a 45 minute long cruise, right? Well, no. Uh, so many beginners make this mistake, and this is exactly why they feel so lost. So think of it like this. You wouldn't expect an electrician to come to your house with a multimeter and probe every single wire in your house just hoping to randomly find the problem that you're experiencing. Before you even got started, you would explain the problem that you're having, and then the electrician would start the diagnostic process based off of the problem that you described. It would save an eternity trying to diagnose and fix the problem that way. It's basically the exact same concept when we go to data log our cars. Uh, tuning is literally just a series of solving a bunch of different problems. So if you just aimlessly log for an extended period of time without a plan or a specific problem that you're trying to solve, you're gonna end up with this big gigantic log that becomes incredibly difficult to make sense of. It becomes extremely overwhelming and you probably won't even know where to begin once you start looking at it. Just like the electrician that we expected to probe every single wire in the entire house. It just doesn't make sense to do it that way. So here's what I suggest that you do instead. Uh, this approach actually solves multiple problems all at the same time, and I'll show you why it's such a massive advantage. Honestly, if an ECU doesn't have this option, I don't even want to use it. It's that helpful. Okay, this first part is a little computery, if that's even a word, but it's super easy. Just bear with me. So the first thing we're going to do is open up whichever version of the Holly software you're using, and then we are going to go to data log and open data log. You can also do this going through the file explorer, but same thing. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna come up here to this new folder button. And if you don't have this, depending on which version of Windows you're using, if you just come here into this area and you right click and go to new and then folder right here. Again, I'll do the same thing. But we're gonna do four, five, six. Let's start with six and see where we're at. So now we're gonna click on whichever folder. We're gonna right click again. We're gonna come down to rename. And this is gonna be maybe a little bit different for everybody depending on how you use your car, but use your judgment here or you can copy exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm going to do startup, right click, rename, warm up, right click, rename, idle park, idle driving, cruising, dip in, do another one, full throttle, and you kind of get the idea. So you can you can do 100 of these folders if you want. And another thing that we can do if we don't want a billion folders all over the place is we can go inside of a folder and then do the same thing. So this is the cruising folder, so we could do like two to 3,000 RPM. And then you could do three to four, you get the idea. So now that we have all of these folders, you may have been able to guess that we are going to take many data logs of each of these conditions and then dump them into the appropriate folders. That by itself will simplify things for you by a million percent, but that's not even the magic of all of this. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So now's the part where we're actually gonna get into our car and take some logs. You can either kind of do a log for each one of these folders or you can work on each one of the folders individually. It doesn't really matter. The goal or the primary objective here is that we're going to have a kind of like a baseline data log and then we're going to make changes 
and then we are going to have essentially a before and a after data log of whatever the problem it is that we're trying to solve within that condition. So now let's say that you've gone out, you've driven the car, you've created the data log, you've opened your data log. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Save As, and now we're going to go into whichever one of these folders that makes the most sense for the data log that we just took. So this is just a sample data log here. So this is a full throttle run, so we'll just do this. And now I would recommend that you name the data log as specifically as you can. So this is just a sample data log. It's just nitrous dynopole, which is okay, but you could be more specific. So you could put like a jet size, maybe how much timing, uh, anything that you think that you might want to reference if you ever go back to this log. So I don't know. Again, you could be way more specific than this, but let's just say it made 1,204 horsepower. Now we click save. It's boring as shit. So having organized logs and folders, properly named logs, and much smaller, easier to digest logs is gonna help you tremendously by itself. But let me show you the magic of all of this. Now I have switched to Dominator software just because I have more logs to show. This process is exactly the same for the Sniper, Terminator X, and HP and Dominator. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to data log, open data log. And right now I'm like inside of one of my folders. So if you want to go back, you can just simply click on like the next thing over. And then now just like we did in the sniper example, we have very similar folders for each kind of driving condition. So I'm going to start with an easy one just to show you. We're going to go with full throttle target air fuel ratio. So you can see I was very specific. So we know exactly what that is without having to think. So once we go into our folder, all of our data logs are saved under the new full throttle target air fuel ratio. So obviously in this case, you would have to do a data log with an 11.0, 12.0, 12.5, 12.8 air fuel ratio. So the objective is we make sort of like our baseline and then we make changes and then we create a new data log with the new changes that just took place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our 11.0 air fuel ratio data log and it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty standard. The big takeaway to look at this is that this is a solid line, not a dotted line. But the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to comparison, click on compare data log, and now we're gonna open up the next one that we did. So usually when I'm doing this, I'll do one at a time. So we'll do like our 11.0, we'll do our 12.0, and then we can compare them. And then we'll open up the 12.0, and then we'll do the 12.5 and compare them. But we'll just kind of assume uh, 12.0 is the second one that we did here. So you can either double click on that or click on it and click open. And now you can see we have a solid line and a dotted line. So I'm gonna left click, drag, so I can zoom in a little bit. And this is where it becomes very, very important to have short data logs. And then also when you drive the vehicle, try to repeat the exact same driving condition as best that you can so that we can overlay them. So in this case, we want to overlay engine RPM. Uh, which is this red line right here, as you can see over here. And we can line these up by using this nudge comparison. There's fancier ways that you can line this up, but it's for the sake of keeping this more beginner friendly, we're just gonna do it this way. So you can see here if we line up uh, TPS, we rolled into the thr throttle a little bit differently, so you don't always get this to line up 100% perfect. But if we back up one frame, then our engine RPM is pretty much identical. Uh, so this is, I'm happy with this. So you can already see here our dotted data log, we let off the throttle a little bit sooner, so we didn't rev it quite as high because the RPM drops sooner. But the big takeaway on this one is going to be our target air fuel ratio because that's a change that we made. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to this E up here, and we can set up all of our channels. So if this is full throttle, air fuel ratio, you might want to just name one of these that, but for the sake of trying to keep this a little bit shorter, looks like this robot tune here has the bulk of the channels that we want or need. So we're just going to click OK, go up here to this drop down, go to rob robot tune. And the main thing here is that we don't want a bunch of stuff on here that we don't need or we're not particularly looking at right this second. So I tend to keep RPM and TPS turned on for every log unless there's a reason not to. But our main focus right now is going to be target air fuel ratio. So we're going to click on that. And now you can see here our solid line and our dotted line. Click. 
and our target air fuel ratios are 11.0 and 12.0, which are the two air fuel ratios that they're supposed to be. So now you can see that one, our target air fuel ratio stayed the same here because we only changed the target air fuel ratio full throttle. And then once we went full throttle, it did what it was supposed to do. And you can see that there's a little bit of a difference here as we rolled into the throttle a little bit differently and kind of Again, this is a very self-explanatory one because we just changed one number full throttle pretty easy. Uh, but this is where you can start to really see what's happening on some of these like transitional areas and things like that. So you might be expecting one thing and getting something totally different. So this is going to become massively, massively important in helping you understand how the settings in the tune file actually get applied. So now let's do one more example that is not quite as black and white as the target air fuel ratio. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to the data log, file, open. I'm gonna come back here. Let's go to idle. So this particular car is kind of fighting, actually ended up being a problem I had never seen before. Uh, let's put it into perspective a little bit of how many data logs you can end up with sometimes trying to solve a problem. Also, you can see that we had some file naming going on and then once i got frustrated uh, i kind of stopped but as i scroll down look at just how many logs there are right around here is where i quit naming them <laughs> uh, but I mean, this is so many logs so a lot of times people think that you know you, you log something once or twice and that's it but that's not always the case so we're going to use these here we'll use the three second and the eight second and what we're doing here is we're adjusting the IEC ramp down. I'll show you where that is in a second. Another huge kind of tip uh, if you're trying to figure out how all of this works is only make one change at a time, log it, compare it, and then see what happens. I'm going to open up our three second here, and this is idle based stuff. So we're going to go to our E here, and we have one here for idle already, and that all looks pretty good. So we'll just click OK, come down here to idle. Here, let me show you. So if we go into the tune file here, we're going to go to idle. And this ramp decay time is the only thing that we're changing between these logs. So I think it was three seconds and eight seconds. So now we're going to go to our comparison, compare data log, and we're going to open up eight seconds. Most situations, you're, you're typically going to try and line up engine RPM. You kind of have to do what makes sense, again, for what it is that you're doing. And on this case, we're trying to work on the D cell of the engine when we let off. So we want to try and line up the RPM where it is dropping down, which is right here. So we can probably zoom in a little bit better here. So basically here we're revving the engine up a little bit, not very high, only 2000 RPM or so. In a perfect world, we would have revved these to the exact same RPM, but uh, you're not always going to get perfect. But you can see that they start aligning right here. Here is where this blue is our idle control, which is the channel that is being modified once we change that ramp down time. So you can see here with the solid line with our ramp down time of th three seconds, it ramps down quickly. And then with our ramp down of eight seconds, you can see that it ramps down much slower. So again, that's doing what we want it to do, but this is like a cause and effect thing. So what are the results of ramping it down slower? So we can zoom in a little bit here. You can see in both examples that the Idle control drops down and then shoots back up and holds. Uh, but with the slower ramp down, it actually shoots up significantly higher. And this, ironically, is the problem that this, this vehicle was having, is it was just being a little bit erratic. So now we're looking at the engine RPM. You can see that the dotted line is surging quite a bit. You can see it's up and down, looks like a roller coaster. And the slower ramp down time was significantly more stable. So if we only had the choice between these two data logs, we would go with the three second ramp down because the idle is much more stable. Uh, but considering the IAC is shooting back up after it comes down, and in both cases the idle is still fluctuating, we know that we still have some more work to do. But again, with the zoomed all the way out, being able to actually overlay and see exactly what the difference is after the changes that we made and like where it happened and what the recovery was, like this stuff is just invaluable in my opinion and you'd be surprised how often you make a change you think it's doing one thing uh, and then when you overlay it with like the day log before you made that change you realize like oh wait this actually didn't work the way that i thought it was going to work at all 
So there is literally no better way to see if the tune changes you are making are actually doing what you want them to do or what you expect them to do. Uh, you would be amazed, especially if you're new to it, how often you're making a change in the tune thinking it's going to be kind of applied in a certain way or in a certain spot. Uh, but then when you actually do these comparison logs, you realize that it happened way sooner, way after, or not at all, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and this is kind of what I mean by once you learn how to do it this way and get into the habit of doing it this way, everything else just feels like guessing. If you are new to tuning and you want to avoid the frustration associated with making these mistakes that I see from beginners over and over again, check out this video here.